perfect to put twin turbos on, right? We are here, PRI 2022, and we are ready to start building this year's engine. It is a 7.3 liter Godzilla engine. We got Vinny Monaghetti here from LME. They're doing the build. Vinny, it is not an LS this time. It's not. What do you think of this engine so far? Um, it's been a, a good platform, you know, obviously you got the cubic inches to start with, and it's a push drive V8, so, you know, that's what we like to work with. I mean, we already dynoed this thing stock, and we made 90 horsepower and 120 pound-feet more than the rating. So that's 520 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque, naturally aspirated. Now we are going to hang a couple of big old turbos off of it, put some good cranking rods in it, a good set of heads, a good intake manifold, and we are going to make power. So we have the engine unwrapped. Look at that beauty. Look at it. Look at it. Just, just look at that. And now we get to lay out all the parts. So we've got Weiss Cove pistons. They are 2618. 2618. And they've got an 043, 043, 2.0 millimeter? Three millimeter. Three millimeter ring pack. pack. Okay, cool. Uh, they've got a 22cc inverted dome. Pretty good sized dome. Um, Look at those valve release. Obviously the anti-wear skirt coating. Big pin. Big How big is the pin? Godzilla. It's like a, it's almost 990. Oh wow, so that's that's not our normal 927 pin. Cool. Oh look at those big boys. So that is beefy. That is <laughs> not only is that big this way, it's got a nice thick wall too. And those are those are trends, right? Trends, yeah, yeah trend always has nice beefy. Stuff. Uh, what's the compression height on this? Uh 132. Oh that's where have I heard something in that range before? Kind of sounds like another engine I know. So with the stock stroke, we're looking at we're looking at about a 10 and a half. 10 and a half, okay. So 10 and a half plus, what are we thinking? Maybe 15 pounds of boost? I don't know, I think we're gonna be surprised. I think it's gonna be about eight to 10 pounds of boost. I, okay. I don't know, they're pretty, they're good sized turbos. There's a lot of inches. So we already made a lot of power in A and that was stock. But you know, a lot better flowing heads. We got a new camshaft yeah. going in. So we're adding all these efficiencies. We can use less boost yeah. to make them more Correct. insane power. So 1,000 horsepower really isn't seeming like that big of a challenge right now. That's I don't think right. it is. Dude, we're gonna make so much more than 1,000 horsepower if the winner wants it. They can do what they want once they get it with a solid, you know, Forge 4340 and ARP 2000 rod. 1,000 horsepower is nothing for these. Correct. I mean, these, these K1 rods are gonna, yeah, there's absolutely nothing to uh, stress about with these. There we go. Plenty of work today. Isn't this like a cardinal sin? Never lay a crank on its side. Oh no, internet, don't kill me. Good parts in a good engine make for a good build. I, I don't know what else to say. This is, you know, I'm not trying to say this is easy, but the aftermarket has kind of made this easy for us. Um, we didn't have any aftermarket bearings to work with for the mains yet. Um, we tried a couple different options other than like actually boring the mains out even more or something weird. Um, but we decided not to do that. So factory main bearings and Clevite rod bearings. They look, they look new to me. That's a testament to Ford's OEM quality that we can, you know, use them in a thousand horsepower build as it comes out of the crate engine. These are energy billet main caps, right? Correct. So billet steel, uh, how do they compare? Because obviously we don't have the factory ones to look at. How do they compare, in your opinion? To I the... mean, these are pretty pretty heavy compared to the, the stock. I think the stock ones would have been good, but we had the op opportunity to put these on. Um, so we decided to give them a try. Obviously nice tight fit. The machining looks perfect on them. Yeah, they're real nice. The fin finish on them was, was pretty good out of the box. Talking to Vinny and we're looking at the main studs for the Godzilla. And they are all the same length, but they are actually different diameters. These are uh, OptiTorque main studs. And it's just unique to Godzilla, because I mean, Godzilla is obviously the six bolt because of the two cross bolts. Uh, I know some people don't like to count the cross bolts. Uh, but it's, uh, instead of having two different length studs, it's just two different diameters. Fun Godzilla fact.
So we're, uh, well, we, I'm not. Vinny is miking the crank to get the diameter of the main journals, and then he will measure the diameter of the main bearing. You subtract those from each other, and that is your bear main bearing clearance. And you do the same thing for the rods. So now, quick building tip, I'm gonna interrupt you real quick. Mm -hmm. I noticed you measuring multiple points across the journal. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, there's taper, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So really, anything I'm concerned about is each rod, and then out of way. Okay, so that's why we measure more than one point. Sure. All right. And look at it, he makes it look so easy. That is a heavy crank, but that is a factory forge Godzilla crank. I'm here with Mike Goodwin, the powertrain and engine product manager planner for Ford Performance Parts. That's a mouthful, I'm sorry, but Mike is our Godzilla go-to. Mike has been a sage, I guess, but when we want to talk Godzilla, we ask him because he's, he's close to it and he has the right answer. I think we're going to be able to let the winner make more than a thousand horsepower. Um, have you, have you guys done the internal testing as to where the block is good for? There are some engine builders out there that are making 1500 on the stock block um, and stock production steel crankshaft. We're just looking over there looking at it. That thing is beautiful. We spent the money properly there on, on that piece, right? Um, Certainly from a performance upgrade standpoint though, we know the next weak point is pistons, right? The production piston on the above the crown is very thin. Uh, some of our early development work when we were looking at a blower for that kind of made us pause and, and back away from it until we can get some better pistons and we're finally to that point now and certainly that's going to be a key component for your boosted build, right? Is the is the pistons and the rods to be able to handle that. So lots of uh, lots of possibilities, lots of goodies coming for these. All right. So in our booth, we have Tom Detloff, who is would it be fair to say the father of the Godzilla? Not exactly the father, but I work at Ford Performance Parts, so I'm very familiar with this engine. So he's humble, he's humble. Now one thing we noticed uh, when we dynoed this is it made quite a bit more horsepower than being rated at. You have to understand how the, the production world rates their engines. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of calibration work that goes into a whole set of criteria that production has to get that aftermarket does. Here's something we can uh, settle, a debate we can settle on the internet. Is it a small block or is it a big block? Typically over four inches is called a big block. So, that, I, yes, I would okay. consider this a big block family. There you have it, internet. We have settled the debate. The Godzilla is a big block. So do you think as for performance that we're gonna see any like higher performance crate engines come out for like hot rod swaps or anything like that? Well, that's the Megazilla, right? Yes. Can you talk to us at all about Megazilla that was, I believe it was released here, right? Yes, Megazilla is, is basically a street cruiser engine. It'll be a 600-ish horsepower, well-behaved street car motor is what, is what the target audience is. If I remember right, it is uh, better pistons, better rods. Right. Uh, the heads, are they? The heads will have some, some mild uh, CNC porting done to them. And uh, it will have the FPP intake manifold. We have a injection plastic molded manifold on the floor. And it, it takes the angle out and pushes it straight forward. It's a good the bump. There's no bump in that 250. Bump. Yeah. Uh, that just makes me smile. <laughs> So 
So Vinny's putting Ultra Black Seal, our gasket maker, RTD, on the flanges of the side bolts so that they don't leak because the side bolt, the cross bolts, Vinny, are they, are they in the oil path or is it just because they're in the splash oil? They go in the crankcase. Okay, so it's just splash I mean, oil that you're finding. Yeah, it has to be between the clearance of the cap and the, the block, but it's just precaution. I mean, it's better be safe than sorry. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that it's nice to do now instead of when it's in the car and leaking everywhere. As you can see, look at all the parts. We're ready to start putting pistons on rods, and then we can put it all in the engine. Then we will have a semi-assembled short block. We got rods on pistons. Caps off, bearings in, last thing is gapping rings. What are we gonna gap these to? Then we're gonna gap them 23, 25. So okay. For a thousand horsepower, that's probably, generally you'll shoot for five and a half thou, you know, per inch of bore. So that's like pretty much per mile boost. Okay, and then obviously if it was naturally aspirated, it would be tighter. Tighter. But because this is boosted, we're, we, and that's basically to allow for all that extra heat to expand the piston and not hit it, right? Correct while still sealed. Correct. Right.